Well, Molly, welcome to MERS. Uh, Thank you. You know, seen from the outside, it's uh, hard to believe that you you have switched the magical Disney world for the coal <laughs> metal container environment. How on earth? <laughs> Very well said. Yeah, no, look, Maersk has a really compelling business story and an amazing technology landscape. I mean, when I think about my time at the Walt Disney Company, it was really exciting and, and you know, I learned a lot. Uh, and uh, at the same time, when I think about the future of data, you know, and, and really driving a data-driven culture, Maersk has all the really incredible ingredients at a time in this industry where, you know, we're really starting to see a drive towards digital native, end-to-end uh, -end supply chain. So, you know, Maersk is really not just about shipping anymore. We're really that end-to-end -end integrator. That's a really exciting and compelling business story. Uh, you know, and, and it, it turns out, you know, uh, in, in California, you know, there's wildfires, uh, there's a lot of uh, environmental uh, impacts. And so when I thought about coming to Maersk too, you know, we're really driving sustainable growth. So it's not just about, hey, can we move more containers, but how can we really optimize those using data and, and driving that, you know, sustainable, you know, methods that aren't increasing the climate change. And it really, you know, is incredibly important to me to have an impact in that area. So I, as a Chief Data Officer, I have really two main parts of my role. So I think about, you know, my peers in technology are generating data. Uh, and so my team has two really main functions. One is to take the data that is generated uh, for use, you know, directly on very complex problems. So when we think about pricing, uh, for example, on spot and twill and contracts, you know, how do we kind of bring that together and, and really optimize that for our customers, you know, and their experience, uh, as well as our own, you know, obviously uh, profitability. So my team really, you know, generate, you know, we use the data that's generated on a platform called Maestro, uh, but then there's also all the data that sits outside of my team and so when I think about the data exchange so there's a lot of data we have like with trade lens uh, where we use external data there's weather data that we share with scientists for improving the forecast so that's really the data exchange and data that sits outside so I have I wear two hats you know one which is kind of our internal concerns and are we really leveraging that you know uh, rich, rich data that Maersk has uh, for that, that again, mm -hmm. optimizing the supply chain. And those are the hands. What are the issues? Uh, so, you know, there's really a couple of issues. One is the fluency and literacy of our ecosystem here at Maersk. And so Maersk has been, you know, shipping has been very uh, structured. And, and, you know, when you think about data, there's a lot of unstructured and new data and kind of new ways to, to really have data driven informed decisions and you know traditionally Maersk is driven by you know and you know people uh, and their intuition not necessarily fact-based and so driving that culture is is really you know both from the internal technology teams as well as the business teams and increasing that uh, capability. So the, the second is really around recruiting, you know, getting the best talent, not just in the technology organization, but when we think about our product organization, Maersk um, about two years ago is driving to a digital native. That requires a really different skill set end to end. And, and now that you mentioned it, why shall I, Microsoft engineer, think about working for this industry, logistics, and ultimately for this company. Maersk. Sure. So I, there's two things that I really think about when when we're recruiting, you know, an, an engineer. So one is when you're at Microsoft, you're third removed, right? So you're, you're Microsoft, you've got your customers, and they've got their customers. It's really hard to have a direct impact. And so at Maersk, you really get that direct impact, you know, on our customers like uh, Nike and otherwise. And so that's really important. Uh, the other is the the ambitious agenda we have. And so you know, at Microsoft, you're going to get you you know, a, a specialized area that you focus in versus Maersk where you really have a lot of different options. So if you look across all our different businesses mm -hmm. as a conglomerate, you know, we have terminals, we have ports, we have containers, we have ships you can really have a much bigger variety of technology because of the variety of the business. And that's, uh, to me, a lot more interesting and compelling. Mm -hmm. And how, how many people are we talking about? How many you know, new members uh, you need in your team? Sure, look, my current hiring forecast is about 40 people a month. Uh, and so we're really, uh, you That's know, huge. <laughs> it is huge. <laughs> okay. Uh, we're really doubling and tripling, uh, tripling our capabilities here. 
Uh, and again, it, you know, it's, it's not just the uh, data engineering, but it's really driving artificial intelligence, machine learning, cognitive platforms, you know, think about robotics and, and all the automation that we need, you know, in supply chain and warehouses and customs broker. So there's really not an area of Maris that isn't going to be really deeply impacted by this data driven uh, experimentation culture. Mm -hmm. Wow. Interesting. Good luck with that. Thanks. <laughs>